Garissa, yes. sit in Nairobi, yeah. uh, call press conferences, mm -hmm. uh, drive big cars, mm -hmm. and let the people of Wajir, Turkana, mm -hmm. uh, Mandera, mm -hmm. and other places to serve. Now that you are on the ground, Bona Governor, what we are saying is, can we change, see a change in the lives of our brothers in Wajir mm -hmm. and probably those who are living in Mandera and other places? So that clear steps that are taken, because specifically what are these, these problems? For example, uh, we have the issue of insurance of IDs. Uh, that is, for example, you may not deal with it, yeah. but you can consult with the national government. Mm -hmm. Issuance of IDs is a big issue in that area. Jobs, creation of jobs. The, the issue of justice for victims of, and Wagala. Uh, of the Wagala massacre. Mm -hmm. uh, wag the Wagala massacre. Uh, we, are, we are talking of uh, the issues of drought and the like. What can the people of Northeastern, for example, come together before you even go to national? Right. I think you, you need to have been there, oh, first Kenya. of all, mm -hmm. to tell the difference. I believe even the Minister of Northern Kenya did its bit. Whether it, um, you know, um, went the full hog or whether it solved all the problems, uh, th th that's, that's uh, you know, uh, clearly not the case. But th they made interventions. They made interventions. And we are not where we were. Uh, say in the 80s or the 90s, even as a country, a lot has changed. Frankly, um, the watering points that we're talking of, there were times when there were probably only five or so boreholes over uh, the then district of close to 60,000 square kilometers. Now the distances have reduced. We have more boreholes. We have more pumps. We have more schools. Like for example, um, yeah. with so the with the six constituencies yeah. and about 30 watts yeah. in in Wajir County, H how many boreholes do we have? Uh, we, we, we took over, I think, 98 or, or boreholes. There were 102 when we came in, and then three of them, like, uh, you know, collapsed. So we, we, we ended up with, I think, 98 thereabout. We've, we've thus far, between what we found uh, successful in, you know, uh, on, on got water and what wasn't successful, we've done already over 15 boreholes. We advertised 35 and awarded the contracts. Those are now on course. Uh, good good effort, but you see, we are talking yeah. over, uh, we are talking good effort. But you're talking of uh, 15 or so boreholes yeah. against a population of about 700,000. Yeah, and that's why we're targeting to do as much as 100 this year. And of course, you know, uh, with things like boreholes, uh, if, if even the technology and the drilling and the speed, uh, someone will dig here and find water. No, someone will dig here and not find water. Another one will dig 100 meters from there and find water. So how good the equipment is, that, you know, all these things do matter. But the long and short of it is, yes, Northeastern has challenges. Those challenges have to do with the the path that we took, I think, those years back, when we defined, you know, economic potential uh, in terms of rainfall, and this is in line with yeah. <laughs> Sessional Paper Number Ten of 1965, where 80% of Kenya, which Asal was totally neglected, but now I think uh, with this new dispensation and with the new thinking, and with the oil find in Turkana and. With the, <coughs> with the prospects for oil find in Wajir and a lot of these other places, I think the country will over time open up and, and, and w this, these things will be dealt with. For now, um, there is definitely the need to think in terms of a Marshall plan for these areas. I'm happy with the one million acres um, th that national government what is doing. What would that Marshall plan I mean, look uh, like for Wajir? Uh, uh, that would be, first of all, to deal with the water issues. And uh, he gave the example of uh, Israel. Israel. We, we're not really as bad as that when it comes to water because there's a lot of water that flows around, uh, you know, left, right, and center through seasonal streams and seasonal rivers when it rains. All we need to do is to have the mega dams to store those. With the little money that I get in terms of equitable share, I'm able to do pants. We're doing, we've done, I think, about six of them now. We're doing about 15 of them. Uh, national government is also coming in. Um, through the Ministry of Devolution uh, to do another 39, uh, 29 small ones um, using various agencies of, of, of national government. We, we, we are constantly um, improving this, but the settlements are increasing. People are becoming more sedentary. The demographics are changing. So um, I think all these are things that we can deal with in our own small way, but to really make those very big differences, it's a question of money. We need what to about get what money about on the ground. What about small differences? Yeah. If you look at uh, development in, in many other parts, yeah. I went myself to Arambi school because in, in that time when I went to school, there were only three schools in Meru district. So we had to do Arambi to build schools in every uh, division or every location. Yeah. 
Now, the people of Wajir, mm. how are they, particularly the elite, mm. going back and, uh, to, 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 to the area and developing it in small matter, in small ways. Mm. Say, for instance, uh, Wajir High School, the alma mater, the, 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 the fellows who went to that school, and the people of Wajir who live in Isili, mm. very rich people mm. with transport, holier companies going all the way to Rwanda, wherever. Uh -huh. How are they returning back to yeah. that area and developing it? I, I think they're involved, you know, they're, they're involved. And there are a lot of schools that are built through Harambe's. Um, and I think now for us, really, of course, you know, the quantity is still a problem because you'll still find schools that have maybe eight classes but only four classrooms. That, that's normal to find in, in a lot of places. But more than the quantity, also the issue of the quality. Is an issue. You don't seem to yeah. be answering Motegi's question yeah, because yeah, yeah. It, it's really a question of how you've tapped in yeah. Yeah. to Wajir's community. Yeah. Because you see, you went to Stereha. Yeah. Um, Stereha yeah. has an old boys association. Which is I'm very sure nice you school. participate yeah. in yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So for Wajir, for instance, yeah. what are the people from Wajir who mm. claim some sort of link to Wajir mm. doing for themselves right. um, and for the people right. who are still in Wajir? Um, any you haven't tapped into that. Any, 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 any formal arrangements at that level, um, I, I think I'll, 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 I'll not be able to speak to it directly. But I know, you know, for instance, what he said about Harambe's. Ours is a very, um, you know, extended family sort of um, society. So chipping in when it comes to building mosques, building schools, building madrasas, we call upon people. And everyone, you know, people will sit down and list everyone who's in Nairobi and say, you know, so and so you get contributions from you know that does happen um, but you haven't organized it say for instance yeah. the way um, the national government has tried to organize the diaspora yeah. um, to harness the remittances mm -hmm. and to help with development has tried to make it easier for mm -hmm. people in the diaspora to invest back in Kenya yeah. you, you don't seem to um, have um, acted in, in, on in that in yet in no. terms of uh, getting the diaspora to come back and invest I think there are steps that I've taken in, cons in constituting my economic uh, council or advisors, because these are, you know, not formal positions, but advisory positions, I included a gentleman who is based in Minnesota, who is pretty networked, comes from Wajir, and in a sense we're having conversations about how he can link us up with, with um, you know, some of the counties in the U.S. and, you know, things like that, and encourage people to come back and, and do things. And devolution, in a sense, also has, uh, you know, uh, reignited um, the, the, the uh, urge for people to come back and do things in the county so land prices are going up and people want to come and uh, you know invest back so those I think probably will crystallize. So, so you don't see that as one of your quick wins because I've got them listed here um, you know scrutinizing procurements, uh, roads, um, tree planting, um, garbage collection providing skips within yeah. town, um, you know community forum um, for the spatial urban development plan, yeah. um, registering plots. Mm. But you, as Muteki says, you have a very wealthy um, a network of mm. people from mm. Wajir. Right. And it seems, you know, an obvious yeah. omission. Yeah, yeah. Instead of going to Menasora, right. go to Isli. They have very many. But no, uh, uh, I wanted to say woodwork. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, not sure sure I'm not sure Muteki can give me names of very wealthy people okay, from Okay, we Wajir, can but take but that conversation <laughs> off. Yes, Muteki, yeah. uh, uh, Let's have not... Uh, cut about issues yeah. about governance. Yeah. It's not only a problem of Garissa. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. Wajir. Uh, uh, we, we are talking of a situation where the leadership of this country is running away from the people. Take a case example of Muranga County, for example, mm. where, where people, people who are hawkers and in very little money in right. Kikomba, they go home daily. But the, these MPs who, who come and immediately they elected we give them money for mortgage, mm -hmm. they buy houses in Karen. Mm -hmm. So I even when we are talking about uh, insecurity mm -hmm. in a county like uh, the, uh, the surrounding counties, surrounding Nairobi, right. to Moranga, Kiambu, and yeah. uh, those other places, yeah. they don't know because they live in Ka mm -hmm. Karen. Now, the guys from Wajir, uh, Mandera, and Garissa, they also come and uh, stay in Isli. Yeah. Actually, where the farthest they go is a hotel in Isiolo, and you must be doing it. I, I think it's called Midway. I'm not very sure. Mm -hmm. But that is the main hotel <laughs> where they get, when they get there, they sleep. When you go to Marsabit, when you get to Marsabit, yeah. they go to another big hotel that is also known there, yeah. either Harmony or something. So these people do not have a touch with the people on the ground. And that's what Woodwork and Mutegi are supposed mm -hmm. to suggest, that uh, 
Well, we cannot blame you for that. In fact, uh, having been there for only uh, nine months or so. But you can do something about yeah, it. But you, you can do something about it. Right. I, 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 I think I, the, as to whether you know, we should involve the diaspora, the county diaspora more, uh, that, that I take. Uh, but um, the other issues of where MPs live and all that, you know, governors live in the county, so I don't want to respond to you. Okay. Excellent. So we'll take a break now. This is Cheche, live on Citizen yeah. TV. Wajiri County Governor Ahmed Abdullah is our guest this morning. Um, we've talked about uh, taxes and devolution. We've talked about Wajir. If you've got any questions for him, you can SMS us on 22422 or you can tweet us. The handle is at Cheche underscore TV. We'll see you after the break.